welcome back to the most amazing channel on the internet. I'm your host Rebecca Felgate and I love music. I really do. My favourite band is Radiohead but I'm also into classical music, jazz, funk, soul, rap, you name it, I love a good beat. There are unfortunately some beats out there that should never be listened to for fear of grave consequences. That's right, we are back with the top 10 cursed songs you shouldn't listen to part 2. You guys seem to enjoy part 1 so much that I thought I would bring you a second helping. Although don't be tempted to listen to these tracks or look too deeply into these curses. If you do, oh I don't know, don't say I didn't warn you. Also guys before we jump into the video I want you to comment with your favourite song. I think mine's Nude by Radiohead but I am loving Kanye West's new album so there's that. Ok, cursed songs. Coming in at number 10 we have Heavy Metal Suicide Solution. In the 1980s heavy metal was at its height in popularity and rock legends like Judas Priest and Ozzy Osbourne were busy swinging their hair and biting bats, but that wasn't all they were doing apparently. According to sensationalist media and some parents, these rockers were writing satanic cursed melodies with subliminal messages that encouraged kids and teenagers to kill themselves. Osbourne's smash track Suicide Solution was blamed for a number of self harming teens as well as the death of depressed teen John McCollum. Ozzy was even taken to court over it. You might be alright listening to this but you are not alright composing this, we have the infamous curse of the ninth which obviously is coming in at number 9. In the world of classic music there is a huge superstition around the ninth symphony. It is widely believed that great composers only have 9 symphonies in them and once it's written they will never complete a tenth. Seemingly it started with good old Ludwig van Beethoven who died 3 years after completing his seminal ninth symphony. Unfortunately he was unable to complete his tenth because he kinda died in the middle. Other victims of the ninth have been Gustav Mahler, Franz Schubert, Antonin Dovrek, Anton Bruckner, Kurt Attenberg, Ralph Vaughan Williams, Roger Sessions, Egon Velleis, Alexander Glazunov and Malcolm Arnold. The most recent victims of the ninth were Vaughan Williams in 1958 and Alfred Schneitke in 1998. A lot of composers were very nervous of the curse. Schoenberg even wrote, it seems that the ninth is a limit. He who wants to go beyond it must pass away. It seems as if something might be imparted to us in the tenth which we ought not know yet. Those who have written a ninth stood too close to the hereafter. Scary words from Schoenberg. He didn't write a ninth symphony so perhaps he was wise. Coming into number 8 we have the Dead Man's Curve Curse. Strangely this cursed song written by Jan and Dean seemed to preempt Jan's fate 2 years ahead of time. The pair wrote a song called Dead Man's Curve in 1964 but in 1966 Jan ran his Stingray Corvette car off the road at a point on a stretch of road in Los Angeles called, you guessed it, Dead Man's Curve. It's very spooky and really sadly Jan Berry spent months in a coma and was partially paralysed. He suffered permanent brain damage. He did semi recover by 1978 and performed a few shows with Dean Torrance but he was never the same again. Perhaps the song was a warning rather than a curse but it was a warning that sadly wasn't heeded. Coming into number 7 we have Ring Around the Rosie. We all know the dark story surrounding Ring Around the Rosie right? We have different versions of it in different countries but in the UK it goes a little something like this. Ring a ring a rosy, a pocket full of posy, a tissue, a tissue, we all fall down. Hope you enjoyed that, thanks. Some people sang ashes, ashes, we all fall down. Either way, it's creepy. The seemingly innocent kids' playground song is actually a dark little ditty about contracting the plague and dying. The ring of rosy refers to the marks plague victims would contract. The posies were flowers people would keep in their pockets to smell, as back in those days, they thought the disease was spread by bad smells. The tissue part was the sneezing sick people would do or the ashes was a reference to the burned bodies. The all fall down part is you guessed it, death, the final falling. So when kids are all singing this and throwing themselves on the floor, they're literally pretending to die and they don't know it. Freaky. I guess this isn't as freaky as imagining a plague doctor singing. Have you ever seen those beaky guys? They freak me out. 
out. I don't think you have too much to fear from this song because the plague isn't quite what it used to be. This next song also made a composer nervous. We have Alexander Skarabin's Piano Sonata No. 6. Russian composer Alexander Skarabin was a bit of an eccentric to say the least. The pianist was influenced by Chopin and he loved an atonal dissonant style. Like many late 19th and early 20th century composers, Skarabin had an artist soul and loved the concept of synesthesia. This is where you associate colours with sounds, so like Rebecca to me might be like red. Maybe it's just because I like the colour red. I don't know. Anyway, the composer wrote Piano Sonata No. 6 in 1911 and he was terrified of it. He was so scared of his creation that he wouldn't even play it. He said that he was afraid of its darkness and didn't want to expose himself or his audience to the horrifying atonality. According to his biographer, the sixth sonata is a nether star. They said its dark and evil aspect embraces horror, terror, and omnipresent unknown. The biographer also said that when Scarabin would play the music for his friends, he would seem frightened and stare off into the distance as if he could see something that wasn't there. Freaky. Coming into number five, we have Babylon by David Gray. If you want it, come and get it for crying out loud. Babylon. If you're hearing David Gray's soft rock 1998 ballad Babylon, you might actually be in trouble. It seems the unassuming 20 year old track is used as a torture song at Guantanamo Bay prison. The track was chosen because of its religious undertones. Babylon is a biblical reference. The idea behind music torture is that it invades a person's mental space, breaking in their thoughts with constant sound, leading a captive with nowhere to hide. It is pretty dark actually if you think about it, there's no space for your thoughts. In part one, we also talked about how the military uses Barney as a dinosaur as a torture track, which is also pretty disturbing. Another one to scare musicians, we have the infamous 27 Club at number four. The 27 Club is a kind of rock and roll version of the Ninth Symphony Curse and refers to rock legends dying in their 27th year. At first, it seems like a bit of a coincidence. Brian Jones, Jimi Hendrix, and Janis Joplin died when they were 27. But then people started to look back through history and realized that a lot of musicians of note died age 27. Robert Johnson, Nat Jeff, Rudy Lewis, they all died age 27. Then Jim Morrison of the Doors died at 27, and the legend began to solidify. Along went Dave Alexander of the Stooges, Pete Ham of Badfinger, Pete DeFratis of Echo and the Bunnymen, and of course Kurt Cobain of Nirvana. More recently, the club has claimed Richie Edwards of the Manic Street Preachers, Amy Winehouse in 2011, Richard Turner of Friendly Fires also in 2011, and of course the band Viola Beach in a horrible accident in 2016. A lot of people point at drinks and drugs, but a lot of the members of the 27 Club died in freak accidents or were even murdered. There's a lot of crazy conspiracies out there, including that the musicians sold their soul to the devil. Sure. Next up, we have the horrible tale of Operation Wandering Soul at number three. This is pretty awful on behalf of the Americans in the Vietnam War. The war went on from 1955 to 1975 and both sides of the fight used torture techniques to try and best their enemies. The Americans employed the use of spooky song to scare their enemies. Back then a lot of the Vietnamese believed that their dead needed to be buried in their homeland and if they were not buried according to the correct ritual and sacrifice, their souls would be doomed to wander aimlessly. US sound engineers used their advanced technology to record eerie sounds and they played them around enemy lines. This was all with the purpose of scaring the enemy into fleeing their position. Helicopters were sometimes flown around to broadcast recordings to the Viet Cong. Basically, they played off their superstitions. The music and soundscapes were for tactical purposes, but many believe that by messing with the legends of the spirits, the Americans in turn cursed themselves when they played the sounds. Who knows? Robert Schumann was driven mad by his music at number two. German composer Robert Schumann went stark raving mad, and many believe the reason lay in his final works. This is now called Ghost Variations. What we know is that Schumann woke on a cold February night in the 1850s, driven by a force that compelled him to write a number of hymn like piano variations. As he tried to get his melody down on paper, he said he was dictated by angels, or perhaps even the ghost of himself. His religious like feelings had taken a turn by morning, and he said that he heard demonic tigers and hyenas in his music. These ghost variations, or Geister variation in German, were the last thing that Schumann wrote before being committed to an asylum.
asylum. He died two years later, age 46, and some people in the classical music sphere are very wary of the music even today. Finally, we have a modern day cursed song that has apparently been sending kids mad, or even worse. That's right, we have the legend of Lavender Town. Any Pokemon fans out there, you might already know this, but the music that plays in Lavender Town in Pokemon Red and Green allegedly sparked an alarming number of child suicides in Japan. The music is undoubtedly spooky. Horror blog Bloody Disgusting hailed it as one of the most terrifying childhood memories for gamers. The music has a number of jarring chords, but it is weirdly calm. I think that we can all agree we wouldn't want to listen to it on a loop for too long. According to a creepypasta that surfaced in 2010, the music it compelled 100 Japanese children to kill themselves. This also left others with weird behavioural outbursts, and some others with physical ailments such as nosebleeds and severe headaches. Sicknesses and suicides became known as Lavender Town Syndrome. Legend has it that the high pitched binaural beats tapped into the brains of children in a way that could affect their moods. Whether or not it's true, it seems that Pokemon were worried. They re recorded the music for the 2017 Pokemon Go Halloween event. Suspicious. So, like, maybe don't listen to Lavender Town. So, guys, that was the top 10 cursed songs part two. What did you think to this list? Let me know in the comment section down below. Very quickly, I just want to read some comments from one of my recent videos. Now, this was the top 10 people that came back from the afterlife. It was an absolute creep fest of a video. You guys had a lot of interesting things to say, so I'm just gonna read out a few of them. Mike Peugeot said, My dad died for 18 seconds when he had a heart attack. He's still alive. I like the video. I'm really glad that your dad came back. Good on him, and I'm also glad that you liked the video. Hurrah! On many, many levels. The Comedy Fun Club had quite the story. They said, My great grandma was told that my great grandpa had died in the war. My great grandma found out he wasn't dead because a few days later he turned up at the front door. Oh my goodness, that must have been like all of her Christmases come at once. Imagine thinking your husband's dead, and then there they are. Amazing. So, guys, thank you for tuning in to this episode of Most Amazing. Did you listen to any of these haunted songs? If so, you okay, hun? You alive out there? Feeling cursed? Let me know. Also, don't forget to let me know your favorite song in the comment section down below. If you like this video, make sure you give it a good thumbs up, share it with a friend, stay subscribed to Most Amazing, and also if you guys want to connect with me on social media, my link is in the description box. I will see you guys next time. <laughs>